We anticipated that celecoxib would have the same benefit in children as it would in adults. In adults, there have been some safety signals with the use of the anti-inflammatory medications and the COX-2 inhibitors, including cardiovascular hypertension and stroke. We followed the children very carefully in terms of blood pressure monitoring and didn't have any of the cardiovascular effects that are seen in an older population, which you'd anticipate in kind of healthy, younger individuals. I think the, the most striking thing in our study is that it was harder to recruit children into our study because many of them in the age group had too many polyps by the time of you know 10 years old to enter into our study. But the, but the other important thing is we anticipated to see a, an event rate where 24.5% of our children on celecoxib would develop the endpoint and 38% of those on placebo would develop the endpoint, even though our primary endpoint was the time to meet the endpoint of polyp progression, we actually had presumed that there would be a certain event rate in the celecoxib arm and placebo arm, and we had a lower than anticipated event rate, which is great for our children because we've never had any natural history data on children before. So this is the largest international study looking at an intervention in individuals with FAP of those ages or in just looking at the natural history in the placebo arm. Since this was an international trial, um, there is variation in the practice throughout the world. In the United States, oftentimes we will use colonoscopy on children to assess for the polyp burden, but in other countries in Europe, they don't um, recommend a colonoscopy as the screening modality in kids with FAP that will go with a flexible sigmoidoscopy which is a shorter scope and once adenomas are detected they'll go on to colonoscopy. Some centers um, throughout the world if a child with FAP has a single adenoma or a few adenomas no matter what the age they might subject them to a total proctocolectomy where the colon and the rectum is removed at that time. Um, in my practice in the United States in Cleveland, we have a large center for FAP, and we basically use a couple of things. If um, there's a psychosocial reason that a child would need to have early colectomy in the face of just a few adenomas, um, if there is a compliance issue where a kid wouldn't come back to continue with colonoscopies on an annual basis, we might say, take the colon out. And then we feel that there are some strong medical indications to remove the colon, which include um, polyps that are greater than a centimeter in size, polyps that could be smaller with evidence of high-grade dysplasia, or an individual that has symptoms related to their polyp burden. Those would all be the strong medical indications. And so in our particular trial, with Understanding the variation in the management of people with FAP, some individuals in other countries said we wouldn't feel safe taking children and removing you know, 20 or more polyps on a single examination because of a theoretic risk of perforation or bleeding. So we needed to design the trial that it could be representative of the world in terms of the children with FAP and management strategies. So, um, you know, I have children with FAP that have 50 or 125 small adenomas and we're managing them and they come back for a yearly colonoscopy. They don't really want to have surgery in the middle of their um, junior year of high school or they're getting ready to graduate. So, so I, I think um, that our trial and the design of the trial might not reflect the general management strategies of um, practitioners throughout the world. But um, so, that, so our patients really were a, a small cadre of small polyps, small polyp burden, but it was all tailored to the safety of the kid first. I think the point is that all the research related to the use of anti-inflammatories and FAP have shown a mild reduction in disease burden, but it's not, you know, it's not a home run yet. And what we're currently looking at is combinations of agents that have different mechanisms of action to uh, basically work on different enzymes that can decrease the polyp burden and have a substantial effect that can in impact the patient's outcome. So really delaying surgery, obviating the need for surgery, and certainly preventing colorectal cancer is what it's about.